the now have demonstrated you know, kind of what SEALs can do. Certainly because there was no air power, uh, there was no free falls. Uh, we didn't need to jump in. Uh, we, did, we did a lot of you know, by boat, by long, by, by long tracks, or running sickles. Uh, I'm one of the, I'm all for worrying, using the, the, the local craft. I mean, I'd rather penetrate with a, a junk boat or a sampan than a, one of our boats that you could hear and see and you knew who we were. And, uh, is there a mission that stands out like from Vietnam, like any particular one? Just... Well, I, I, was, I was there for Tet of 68, which was the one that broke our back uh, politically, uh, certainly here in the States domestically, as did we have the will to stay there. But they just rolled right in. Uh, I was in Chow Duck, which is right on the Cambodian border, on a river. Uh, but they also have a canal that goes all the way the length of the country uh, out, to the, out, to this, out to the ocean. And uh, it was theirs, it was their free. We went out, Tet is their New Year's. So um, our rules of engagement is that you couldn't actively patrol, you couldn't pursue them. You could set up a listening post and if attacked, you could defend yourself. So, um, I let a patrol, we went out near the, the purple line that says you're in Cambodia. It's painted on the ground. And uh, set up, and it, it was set up. It, it took us about two hours to walk in through some small minefields, and uh, we must have found them just as they were ready to cross. Uh, and and I, was, I was on point and sent something and dove as a Machine gun blast went out right past my ear. And the reason I say about the minefield, the two hours going in, and we were about 18 minutes, we ran through that minefield, and no one set one, one off. So I guess we were in that hover mode. But uh, by the time the, the river craft picked us up and took us back to the capital, the, the BC had taken over the capital. So the, the C team was, the Special Force C team was surrounded. Uh, we had American nurses that were up there and taking care of the hospital. And if you remember, there was a movie series, Combat, World War II. Uh, well, that's what we looked like. So here we, here we are in camouflage gear, face painted, just came off patrol, running around capital city in commandeered jeeps with 50 calibers on it, shooting rooftop to rooftop, playing cops and wops, like, what, what is this? So um, it was just uh, my, my first taste of real urban warfare that I, I wasn't, wasn't ready for with the ricochets and going through doors and windows. And, but that, that certainly set the stage in that we weren't doing enough damage. If you do the, the body count of uh, SEALs versus VC or NVA, uh, it certainly is a big hit. And, uh, you know, if you could crank out seals fast, you'd win a lot of wars that way. But they certainly had a lot more numbers coming down the Ho Chi Minh Trail, and uh, so, so they they had it set up that they could last a lot longer. The uh, I guess on the still coming out of Chow Duck just after Tet, we went and set up on a down the canal, been taken out a little further, heading. Uh, south along the border and watch a training battalion is what they call themselves but they're small numbers for battalions they're about 200 strong but they came in from cambodia and they i guess were coming in to get fresh food in vietnam in, in vietnam where there were good ducks and fish and and there plenty of rice and fruit so that, like i said earlier it was a bread basket at any rate, they moved in, and then we were uh, eight of us, counting uh, Drew Dix, who got the Medal of Honor, a uh, special forces guy that was assigned to the Pru unit and, and the CIA. But uh, on their way back out, uh, we just couldn't let them get away clean. And we had already arranged that for artillery, but we were calling in artillery shells 
variable time, so they detonate right above us. Uh, and we engaged them, and, and, but they were beautiful. I mean, they dropped to their knees, and they fired back. And, I mean, just like in, I thought I was watching a European movie, and I was like, oh, watch this. And uh, they started flanking it, uh, when the artillery started coming in, and, and uh, we, had, we had better weapons. We had stoners, and we had M60s, and we had a good volume of fire out. But by the time we broke, went back to an out, a uh, outpost, friendly outpost. Uh, we we stopped and we were down to forty nine rounds between the eight of us. So it was, uh, and we were firing from a from a, a graveyard. So we were hiding behind Viet, Vietnamese tombs. Uh, so that little comic, I guess, there in, in, in that one. But I, again, normally we would go, would have gone back into town and. We had just kind of been expended and said, we'll just stay here tonight. And had we gone in, we would have hit a mine on the road in that, I mean, it was one of those things, you got to, you know, you can have all the angels and everybody's God and you still take some luck uh, into the sale. Uh, I don't have any purple hearts. Yeah. I'll always get the other guy first. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I figured Congress couldn't declare the war, I wasn't going to get hurt. But that's, you know, those are, I guess breaking points uh, in, in Vietnam for us is that one being inland now and, and finding where they actually had weapons cache, where they would have stockpiles of weapons still wrapped in cosmoline, buried. And uh, so it got to be a, uh, a very you know, progressive lesson learned of what the bad guys can do in a guerrilla warfare.